Hello, I'm Di Roberts from the Insight School of Art and I'm going to show you a few little exercises to improve your art. I'm going to show you how to paint a watercolour portrait from a photograph. First of all, with a fairly neutral colour, I'm just going to use the brush to draw, knowing that however confident I am as a portrait artist, I'm probably going to revisit all this and change it. And because it's watercolour, I can easily do that. What I'm going to do is place the shapes of the face on the paper, almost as a drawing, but because it's already in paint, it means that I can move it around, manipulate the colour a little bit. And placing the eyes. Working from a photograph means that there's no depth in the photo. The image keeps still for you, which is helpful, but because there's no depth, you want to try and put some in. All I'm doing is copying the shapes that I see and trying, as always with art, not to make anything up. Now, the shadow. And I can see straight away I've made the chin too big. So let's bring it down. Another up a little bit and across like that. And we can incorporate that into the neck. The eye irises are here and here. Forehead's quite high. Let's just place the hair coming right the way down. Okay. Use a little bit more of this neutral red. Now I'm going to start with a little bit of a wash. I'm going to use the edge of that line as the starting point to bring a little bit of colour into my portrait. Just a tiny touch of cadmium red and burnt sienna. The mix of the two is ideal for this particular face. In my experience, most portraiture, most skin of most cultures has a base of burnt sienna and it works very nicely. I'll put a little bit of cadmium red in, not too much there, let's just lift some of that away. Okay. So we're laying down a base coat, quite loosely and quite wet. Those lines are showing through, which is what I want. And we'll come down to the neck as well. I'll try and remove that line using a stiffer bristled brush, which will lift it away. Because my friend would not like to have a double chin that I've just given her. Let's put a bit of colour under there, a bit of shadow. image. Right, let's go back to the eyes. Quite a lot of dark areas around the eyes, so I'm using a semi-dry brush now, not too wet at all, and I'm using just a basic brown. It's a burnt umber. On top of that burnt sienna, it gives quite a deep tone, possibly a bit too deep, so we can just remove a little bit and lift it away. And same under here, under the fringe it's quite dark. And under the eye itself. Again, if there's too much, just lift it off slightly. Let's put the eye colour in. And this young lady has got bluey grey eyes, so we'll put the blue in first. And leave a little bit of light showing to give a bit of realism and as I said before working from a photo is a little bit flat you haven't got the depth and you may not see a sparkle in the eye because you don't see it with most parts of art you would draw what you see but to do somebody's portrait without that twinkle 
uh, is a shame. So you can always put a twinkle in when it's a bit drier. Now I'm emphasising some of the shapes. Let's soften up where that burnt umber meets the rest of the flesh so there isn't a big line. Keep emphasising all these dark areas. Come around the nose a bit. Around the cheek. That side of the mouth is quite a dark feel to it. Softening up the edges wherever I've made an edge. I don't particularly want a crisp edge here, for example. So just feathering it away with the brush. And here, under the chin. Just lifting it a little bit. I can move that down into the dark area underneath. Let's go back to those eyes to grey them off a little bit. That's a bit too much. Let's just lift a little bit of that off. Wait for it to dry and then I'm going to put the pupils in there. In the meantime, I can just darken up around the lids. There's a touch of eyeliner and mascara. And of course, if you're painting from a photograph, you want to make your model look as attractive as possible. So if they're wearing makeup in the photograph, put the makeup in, in the painting. Let's just Go back to those lips while that's drying. Some deep Indian red lips. The top lip is always darker than the bottom because the top lip's going underneath and the bottom lip is protruding slightly and therefore has more light on it. So a bit of a lighter tone. And remember when this is dry, you can lift off. Watercolour is very maneuverable, manipulate the colours. Okay, this lady's got a little bit of a dent under her lower lip, so let's put it in. There's a bit of a dip there. And around the chin again. Go back to those eyes. Put a dark dot where the pupil is in the middle. And then we're going to put the hair in with a fairly dry brush feel so that it doesn't have to be coloured in all over. It's got very dark hair, comes down the side here and notice the action with the brush. I'm bringing it up from the underneath of the hair rather than painting down into it. Very dark where the hair reaches the edge of the face. You can emphasize the shape of the face with the hair. Let's just try to avoid any runs like this, just with a cloth and clean it up a little bit. shape of the hair. Emphasize the cheekbone again. Emphasize the shadows. Do a shadow down by the side of the nose. Let's use the stiffer bristle brush to remove and lift off any errors. Tidy it up a little bit. You can use this as well to put a bit more hair around the back of the head. And again, this dry brush feel 
looks pretty good. And that's how to do a portrait in watercolour.